in another instance of kind of like you know watching how you move when black this is another kind of cautionary tale and unfortunately my guess was right i think i said it maybe in the action of zinger show maybe i said it on my podcast maybe um that i was saying that i think the jonathan major thing the fact that he's flipping management because think about it this way like if a management company is sending out a press release um you know telling all these news outlets that they've cut ties with you it's a bad bad sign in my opinion it basically means one thing i think it said mean one of two things i think i mentioned in the last stream it means either they are aware that the court case is going to be delayed and it's going to take too long to clear up so they're not going to be able to get any money from you so they want to distance themselves from you as soon as possible or the other more egregious option is that there are other victims who have now basically come out or are in the process of coming out and it's going to get very hot for you very quickly and unfortunately for flipping jonathan majors it's the latter more victims have come out this is courtesy of variety and exclusive from them it says jonathan majors issues worsen as more alleged abuse victims cooperate with the da's office more victims come out because at first it looked like bad luck it looked like an issue where you know it's it, no, it's not bad luck fuck that it's not bad luck i I'm a personal accountability type of dude. Um, you know, I kind of ascribe to the Jocko Wilnick principle of extreme ownership, right? That book that he flipping released ages ago. I'm extreme ownership type of dude. So I put all the blame on him because the alleged story out there is that Jonathan Majors is out at some swanky celebrity thing, some sort of gala, some sort of red carpet event, whatever, something to do with the entertainment industry. He takes his girlfriend along there with him and somehow during the night, he ends up maybe flirting with somebody he shouldn't have been flirting with. His girlfriend sees that. Then on the way home, they have an argument in the cab. The argument in the cab then escalates to physical. And then he puts his hands on the woman. And then either, you know, a police officer walking by sees them arguing and him putting his hands on her. Or the cab driver reports it. Something happens. And obviously because it gets reported, he then has to sit in jail for a couple of days or a day, I think. And then the girlfriend ends up the next day rescinding the statement because, you know, they're a couple, you know, maybe this stuff happens on a regular, who knows? At the first point, I thought this was just bad luck. But actually, the issue that Jonathan Majors has is that as soon as that issue happened, people on Twitter, random people on Twitter were like, oh, I know this Jonathan Majors guy from my local theater scene and he's always been a piece of shit. That's what I first saw. I saw all these random tweets from people who were saying that this guy was always a piece of shit, but you know everyone on online, everyone online was loving him for being in creed and first trapping on him for being this really fit buff guy bloody blah, blah 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 so that one mistake that he did with his girlfriend in a car has essentially now cost him his entire career but on the other hand some could argue that this was always going to be on the cards because he was such a scumbag when he was coming up so it's kind of like you know you can't escape the horrible things that you do sometimes. You really can't escape it. But for him, it's just the timing is awful. He was legitimately on the cusp of being a huge Hollywood star and then it's all gone. But I also think a part of me, I can't help it. Again, a part of me, my flipping, um, you know, my the civil rights part of me, the activist part of me is like, it happened too quickly because he's black. I feel like other guys get grace. They might put out a couple more films. They might have to enjoy some time. But it just feels like it happened too quickly. Like it happened so fast, his career getting over. Like everybody's dropped. You know what I mean? Somehow I think to myself like, why didn't Ezra Miller get dropped the same way? Ezra Miller has the same type of accusations against him. There's a video about Ezra Miller choking somebody, hurting somebody. Like why didn't Ezra Miller get the same sort of treatment? Like why is it when we do stuff we get deadly we get deadly 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 consequences we end up like this kid right if we make a mistake we end up like ralph yari this 16 year old boy who ends up going to the wrong house to go pick up his siblings get shot in the head and shot in the arm we make a mistake one mistake it, it potentially might cost us our life with flipping jonathan majors he makes a mistake he gets into a heated argument with his girlfriend he puts his hand on her obviously bad but he makes a mistake and his whole career is over. I don't know. 
a part of me thinks that, but I also, you know, it's one of those things like big black dude, small white woman. The optics are never good, right? That's why I, I, I always say like the way that I kind of move around in the world has kind of been um, the way I kind of navigate through the world is somehow been informed by my physicality, right? The fact of my height, my size, you know, my hair, how loud I am, everything is kind of calibrated to that. Like I kind of calibrate myself based on where I am because I know how I can how I can come across as certain people in certain spaces. So I'm always flipping aware of it, hyper aware of it. And sometimes I can have good intentions, but it can come out weird because of what I look like, how I say things, blah blah blah. No one's gonna give me the benefit of the doubt. <sighs> So you kind of have to always say the blame lies in his court. And it's the same with the whole Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion thing. As much as I think Megan Thee Stallion lied and Tory is probably innocent, at the heart of the issue, at the heart of the issue with Tory Lanez and Megan Thee Stallion, who's really to blame? Tory Lanez, really, if you think about it. He was fucking, Ky he was fucking Kelsey. The he was fucking Kelsey, Megan Thee Stallion's best friend. That wasn't enough. He started fucking Megan Thee Stallion. That wasn't enough. He goes to Kylie Jenner's house and tries to fuck her. And obviously angers Megan, which causes the whole flipping argument. So at the cusp, at the part of the issue is a guy's inability to keep his penis in his pants. Same thing with this Jonathan Majors guy. He goes to a gala event. He's there with his girlfriend and he's flirting with a woman in this event. Why are you flirting with someone when your wife's there? It's, or your girlfriend, especially if she's the kind of girlfriend who's very jealous, very possessive. Relax, relax. And then he doesn't relax, and guess what happens? <laughs> he puts it like he tries to do fucking creed moves on his girlfriend in a car. So as much as I want to blame society and being a black man and blah blah blah, sometimes if you just keep your penis in your pants, you are fine. If you don't steal from anybody, no crypto scams, no flipping assault shit no flipping creepo pedo things you'll be left alone really it's kind of easy if you think about it no it's not e it's kind of easy you i'm sure you have to kind of avoid temptation i'm sure there's honey traps out there but if you avoid crypto scamming if you avoid assaulting people randomly and you just you know i don't know if you tr you take girls on dates even if you're on a fuck you, you pick them up you, you pay for the meal you drop them off you know, you maybe put some money in their pocket if they, if they don't want to get dropped off and say, hey, here's some money to get a cab back. It sounds a bit prostitution -y, but you know what I mean. You just, you're a gentleman. Usually you can avoid all issues. You don't have second families, you know, that sort of stuff. You let people know what time you're on. That kind of works. But I think if you do other stuff, it goes crazy. Anyway, moving on. Let's read the article. Um, as Jonathan Majors prepares for his May court appearance on domestic violence charges, like who wants that next to their name? God have mercy, man. I pray for the Lord above that I never had, like, domestic violence charges. Like, that sounds so awful. It sounds like you're a terrorist. <laughs> domestic violence charges. Oh, his PR problems are about to get bigger. Sources familiar with the matter tell Variety that multiple alleged abuse victims of majors have come forward following his March arrest and are cooperating with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Snitches! The prospect of more women waiting in the wings would mark a dramatic turn in the case and comes on the heels of majors publicist and management firm cutting ties with the embattled actor earlier this week. Embattled. Charges. Violence. Like, God damn it, man. He just had a very heated argument with his girlfriend. Look what's happening to him. They treat him like he's a monster. They're using the same physicality, the same strength and muscles and physique that everyone was lusting over has now become his Achilles heel. Or as Bre Brendan Shaw would say, his Achilles heel. Damn it. Damn it. The DA declined to comment. <laughs> he's so fucked. The DA declined to comment. He's a monster. He's gonna eat your children. <laughs> what he can say? What's that? Is it your voice will be good in the natural documentary? You should replace David Attenborough when he dies. <laughs> no, no, David Attenborough. David Attenborough is never gonna die. He's a fucking legend. He's a UK legend. David Attenborough gang, gang, gang. But yeah, appreciate you, Jay. Appreciate you. Thank you. Um, but we we don't want David Attenborough to die, man. He's a legend, man. He's our Steve Irwin. Um, I repeat to Steve Aaron as well, the GOAT. Um, it continues. 
Jonathan Majors is innocent and has not abused anyone. We have provided inf ir irrefutable evidence to the district attorney that the charges are false. We are confident that he will be fully exonerated, said Majors attorney Priya Chowdhury. Yo, Priya, you're doing a good job, babe. Well done. Fight for your client. Hopefully he bust, he bust case and he's out here again, but it's not looking good. Uh, let's continue. The Creed Free Star was arrested on March 25th in the Chelsea neighborhood of Manhattan on charges of strangulation. Oh my God, look at the charges. Look at the language they're using. Look at the language they're using. Look at the language. Strangulation, assault, harassment. God forbid. God forbid. Strangulation, assault, and harassment. <laughs> wow. At the time, the NYPD spokesman person said that in a statement that the 30 year old woman told police that she had been assaulted by majors 33 and she sustained she sustained minor injuries on her head neck and was removed from an area hospital in stable condition but chowdhury mounted an immediate and aggressive response insisting that the actor is provably the victim of an altercation with a woman he knows um an emotional crisis a source familiar with the chronology of events sorry says so that the attorney released a statement while he was still behind bars. One thing I'm surprised about, if this happened in the back of a cab, and this is the case, right? And we all know the core public opinion can bury you, it can hurt your, you know, hurt your ability to make money in your career more than an actual criminal court can. There are some people who can legitimately go to prison for rape, come out and still have a career. But if you get buried in a court of public opinion, you're basically done. I'm actually curious, why didn't Jonathan Majors you know uh council decided to leak the flipping cab footage just to kind of get him out of the flipping dirt when it first happened why didn't they leak the cab footage they should have leaked it maybe the police you know flipping um took it under their position straight away but i'm surprised the cab footage didn't leak before because if if what he's saying is true and jonathan major was just sitting in the car you know trying to basically ignore his girlfriend and she was the one assaulting him and he was trying to defend himself and he was kind of whatever it may be whatever the story is why not release the footage so that he can be exonerated in some way in the court of public opinion like leak it by accident that might have been a good thing but i'm also thinking maybe they don't want to put the footage out because the footage doesn't really paint him in a good light either because he's probably like you know standing over her and shouting and looking crazy so i don't know but i'm surprised they didn't put it out Chowdhury's husband it's a husband and flipping a uh, wife affair yeah Chowdhury's husband Andrew Burke is serving as Majors crisis publicist and double down on the narrative that Majors was a victim of course he is you're getting paid twice come on uh, <laughs> the victim released a series of text messages on March 3rd 30th sorry and was intended to be exonerating in the text messages which has not been independently verified the woman wrote to Majors I told them it was my fault for trying to grab your phone and stressed that she told police this was not an attack. The woman allegedly wrote, please let me know you're okay when you get this. They assured me that you won't be charged. They said that they had to arrest you as protocol when they saw the injuries on me and they knew we had a fight. I'm so sorry that they did. And I'm sorry you're in this position. We'll make sure nothing happens about this. I love you. If, if you did that to me, and I'm, I, I was meant to be the next fucking Denzel Washington. Like, you you best open a window and walk out of it. Don't ever text me. You know what I mean? I hate you. <laughs> Don't be saying I love you after you just got me arrested. <laughs> like, what? I was meant to be the next Denzel Washington. A few hours later, the woman allegedly wrote, uh, I know you have the best team. There's nothing to worry about. But I just want you to know that I'm doing all I can on my end. I also said to the judge to know, oh no, I also said to tell the judge to know that the origin of the 99 call was to do with me collapsing and passing out. Okay, so he strangles you and hits you. You collapse and pass out, but he didn't do anything bad. <laughs> Why did you collapse and pass out then? What? Um, it was to do with me collapsing and passing out and your worry as a partner due to our communication prior <laughs> but for many who were in the business of with majors the text messages had the opposite effect and raised more questions that than they needed answers namely why the woman had lost consciousness exactly <laughs> it read like a bad lifetime movie 
They basically look like the text messages of a textbook abused woman, says one person who's working with majors on an upcoming project. In recent months, majors had become one of Hollywood's most prominent stars. We know that. Um, the mega budget um, tentpole Avengers The Kang's Dynasty is scheduled to begin production in the spring of next year. This is already in the deep business with majors, given that he's spe given that its speciality label Searchlight acquired the actor's critical lauded drama magazine Dreams. Oh my God. Disney purchased a drama that he created. He's meant to be starring in an Avengers movie. Movies coming out. Creed is probably going to continue. <sighs> this is the greatest bag fumble of all time. Of all time. Majors already shot the second season of Disney's series Loki, which is expected to launch uh mid 2023 disney has added a wrinkle in that the alleged victim in the manhattan incident also worked on this year's ant-man disney spokesman declined to comment separately majors is stepping down from the board of gotham film media institute and he's working the sydney portier initiative which was created to support the emerging filmmakers the industry also jolted by news of major publicists that Leddy um company and management 360 had dropped their star as of now wme is still representing majors okay that's a big one because I remember I knew it was over for um, Chris Lear and Brian Callan when CAA, I think, dropped them. I'm not sure if they're, are they still signed now? I'm not sure. But I remember when the Brian Callan and the Chris Lear thing happened, they both got dropped from CAA. And I was like, oh, shit, this is serious. So the fact that he's still represented by WME is a big deal. Like they're still sticking by him. That means a lot, to be fair. So maybe it's not all over, over. Um, in 2018, the agency created a so-called client advisory committee, which makes a recommendation on whether or not to drop a client gives them impropriety. The committee of some 20 staffers split evenly along gender lines and from cross-section of divisions, evaluates a client's viability amid accusations and considers such factors as if the client has been charged criminally or if the or if the or if is facing a civil lawsuit. Okay, this explains why they didn't do it then. WME previously dropped uh, clients such as Brett Ratner, Brian Singer, and Army Hammer. The committee has not met yet regarding majors based on the information that is available. So in the wake of the actors' march arrangement, uh, a com on a complaint involving mis uh, misdemeanor charges, red flags, border actor Tim Nicole, who appeared alongside Rachel Wise in public theatre production of Plenty, tweeted that day, I'm already seeing a bunch of why didn't you do anything, folks. People have tried. Ultimately needed a victim to come forward. It's both simultaneously awful to know he's still doing this and also a relief that he may never get to go he may never get to again. A bunch of us are so close to people and sometimes multiple people he has already directly harmed. I don't know if they will speak on it. It's completely their decision. So this was somebody involved in the business in Broadway who basically came out and said, Hey, this major guy's been a piece of shit for a long time. I'm not surprised. Wow. When Variety reached out to Nicoli, he responded and said, I stand, I stand by what I said and I support his victims. I know of in however they chose to move forward. Um, but yeah. Crazy account, crazy news. Um, it's looking peaky for Jonathan Majors. But again, a cautionary tale for any person out there who's operating in the entertainment industry. Mind your P's and Q's. Mind your P's and Q's. Keep your PP in your pants. Treat people with respect if you can, if it's possible, especially those that you love, because sometimes it can go tits up. When it goes tits up, it goes tits up for real. Like, it's no coming back sometimes from that. And um, yeah, man, it's looking peaky for Jonathan Majors. Thoughts and feelings, man. Thoughts and feelings. But on the good side of, of the track, on the side of life where you don't have any consequences for your actions, even if you murder somebody, look at this news. Alec Baldwin in manslaughter charge to be dropped in rush shooting he got away with it again he fucking got away with it now let's imagine if alec baldwin were jonathan majors and jonathan majors was alec baldwin do you think he would have got away with it of course not <laughs> alec baldwin got away with it kelsey of variety it says prosecutors are expected to drop the manslaughter charges um against alec baldwin the death of the rust cinematographer hey um Hey, nah, how do you say her name? 
Miss Hutchinson. Sources confirmed on Thursday. In a statement, Baldwin's lawyers said that they were pleased with the outcome. Of course they are. We are pleased with the decision to dismiss the case against Alex Baldwin. Um, we encourage a proper investigation to the facts and circumstances of the tragic accident. Um, they're calling it an accident. Okay, cool. Um, Bolden has charged in January with involuntary manslaughter, an accidental shooting in a set of rust which took place in 2021. Prosecutors accused him of ne uh, negligently firing his Colt 45 during a setup of the scene of the Bonza Creek Ranch. Um, Baldwin has maintained that he did not pull the trigger and had no idea that the gun might contain a live round. This is something that I just don't understand. Maybe people that own guns can let me know. I'm sure that is a thing. But if you don't have if you don't have a round in a gun and you just shake it, can it go off? Like if you just move it around without pulling the trigger, is that possible? Is is it possible that he's not lying? Because it sounds like a lie to me. But is it possible that if you don't have a okay, but <laughs> Natasha is like no, that you can just like shake it and it just it fires and it hits somebody in the chest because I think it hit the woman in the chest. Is that possible? No. Okay. <laughs> okay. So he's lying. <laughs> this is a bold-faced lie i knew it so the the bullet bullet went off hit somebody but you didn't pull the trigger sounds about white to me Baldwin's lawyers recently presented evidence to the prosecutors that influenced the decision to drop the charges according to a source familiar with the process okay so they got some evidence the evidence indicated that the colt 45 had been modified prior to shooting making it more difficult for the da to prove that baldwin actually did pull the trigger how did they modify it the DA will drop the charges without prejudice, meaning that the case could be re re refiled later, perhaps with a lesser charge. But there is no indication at the moment that the prosecutors have any plan to revive the case. The DA also filed involuntary manslaughter charges against Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, the armorer who loaded Borden's weapon. The case against her is expected to proceed. Of course, the flipping regular civilian, the regular schmegular civilian, just trying to earn a wage, she gets prosecuted. But the highfalutin Hollywood elite, he gets all charges dismissed. Makes sense to me. The person for the DA office declined to comment. The prosecution has been plagued with setbacks, with many observers questioning whether the DA will be able to show the Baldwin acted in criminal negligence. So, yeah, Alec Baldwin got away with it. Not surprised, to be honest. Um, again, sounds about white to me. Sounds about white to me. Moving on from that, moving on from that. What are you guys saying here in the stream chat? I knew it. Someone has to go, go in jail. Exactly. Someone has to go jail. It's not Alec Baldwin. It's not Ilaria Baldwin, you know? Eh, hey, comment should you share jail? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> she's not having it. Puerto Rico in this <laughs> Oh, Regular regular prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Alec gets to go on vacation. Exactly regular armor like she just working a job earning i don't know 24 to 50 grand a year as an armorer shitty job having to be around fucking celebrities who think they're badass and then you know they 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 they, they fucking make the mistake and then you get fucking punished for it you might see prison time he's gonna be in fucking you know Cob copacabana beach enjoying himself you know fucking hell um bodybuilder news says she's not a regular civilian she's literally responsible for the death like her job is literally to make sure something like that wasn't possible yeah but if that's the case if there's a full chain of people that need to get prosecuted for the lapses in concentration or whatever it may be called everyone along the line should be punished in some way shape or form the fact that alec baldwin is getting no punishment whatsoever that's a fucked up part about it in this respect especially with the optics he's all these charges get dropped but then her charges proceed that's the fucked up side of things. I don't think anyone's saying she's not responsible, but it's just the fact that she's getting all the blame and he's getting none of the blame. That that doesn't really sit right with me, really, to be fair. Okay, I was just saying I never thought it was Alec Baldwin's fault. Fair play. Fair play. Fair play. I, I just think someone should be punished. If somebody loses their life in that situation, it shouldn't just be, oh my God, tragic accident. You didn't stub your toe. You didn't stub your toe. You didn't prick your finger. Somebody died somebody's without a mother someone's without a sister without a flipping sibling without a fucking co-worker like you know what i mean she's gone that's not cool somebody should be punished for that woman doing a job and then dying on the fucking job especially if there's negligence involved uh, along the chain everybody should get punished in some way but one guy doesn't get punished one person does and the person that does get punished happens to be 
the regular schmegular civilian. Hey. 